ओम ज्ञानातिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजनशलाखया चक्षुरन मिलित ज्ञान तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतल स्वयं रूपकथाम ददति स्वपदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरुन वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जाता सहगण रघुनाथता तम सजीव साध्वैत सवधूत परजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदा सहगण ललित श्री विशाखान्वता नम विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश धारणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अतिदार शिव सर्गोर भक्त हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम प्रोपाल लीला अमृत वॉल्यूम वन चैप्टर थर्टी सिक्स द लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ द वॉल्यूम इन एवरी टाउन एंड विलेज लंडन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन फ्रॉम फ्लोरिडा दिस रिमोट कॉर्नर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड प्रोपाल रिटर्न टू द न्यू यॉर्क एंड आफ्टर थ्री डेज फ्लू टू लंडन डेयर ही बिकेम इल On August 14th, he wrote to Tamal Krishna, "I am sick here since the last four days. There is no sunshine. Almost always there is darkness and rain. So it has affected my health because I am already rheumatic." Propa said he wanted to retire from traveling and management. This bold, this body is old and it is giving warning. But he didn't have sufficient confidence that his leading managers could push on without his. pushing him pushing them propat complained to his secretary shyamasundara criticizing him and the other zonal secretaries for not producing and distributing his books on a large scale why are there no books propat demanded and shyamasundara cringed unable to give a satisfactory answer shyamasundara said he would immediately write to his god brothers on the bhakti vedanta book trust why have a why have a book trust propat argued what have they done there is no stock of big books there are no literatures in foreign languages after years of promises and plans why hasn't the unbridged bhagavad gita as it is been printed yet um as far as teachings of lord chaitanya the nectar of devotion shrimad bhagavatam krishna the supreme person of godhead well shyamasundar replied because they no it's your responsibility propa yelled why haven't you done it Propat chastised his GBC secretaries around the world through the one secretary before him. The GBC's duty were to see that Propat's books were always on stock, in stock, that Back to Godhead magazine was being published regularly, that accounts were being paid regularly, and that the devotional life in the temples was healthy. Our business is how to expand," said Propat. "How to introduce Krishna consciousness into educational circles? Let our philosophers, scientists, or educationalists come. We have got enough stock. But this sleeping, this lazily, sorry, leisurely work, will not do. They can learn activity from an old man like me, because my determination is like this. If I die working, it is a great credit." just like a marshal if i die if he dies on the battlefield it is his credit arjuna was told even if you die you are still the gainer this slow process of printing is the most condemned posi- uh, position why should i go on translating when you cannot print you say retire and translate but why should i translate no one will ever see it i can give you volumes there is a dai nippon who will print in japan on credit so why don't you print always it is to be done it is to be done that's all and big man complaining either he goes or i go this restlessness this diversion has to stop when the father is providing it is the duty of the son to serve i am the father i am giving you everything why don't you serve me by printing these books if one book only is read and understood that is sufficient to make him krishna conscious don't you see how important it is they are always asking me is such and such book bona fide they can't even take the time to read one of my books and still they ask for one of my god brother's books how will they how will things go on first kind of shrimad bhagavatam is not even edited or corrected what to speak of printed so many books unprinted so tell them from the book fund not a farthing should be for eating one day advaita the manager of iskon press called from <clears throat> new york with some good news in a week they would be sending dynipon the negatives for first big books 
this conference had also sent a shipment of the german issue open issue to europe and other foreign language books were forthcoming propad was pleased and shama sundara informed his gbc god brothers needless to say this was just the medicine required to set uh, propad's slackening faith in us things are looking up but still propad encourages us all to write up their these reports and get a clear all round picture of the total book situation although propad's health was still weak he felt heartened to hear that his books were being printed and he continued with his translation and commentary of shrimad bhagavat ranchor one night i was very late uh, one o'clock in the morning as i came in i saw that propad's light were on in his uh, room front room and i could hear his voice speaking into the dictating machine i came up the stairs being as quiet as possible could so propad wouldn't know that i am up so late but as i passed his door i couldn't resist the temptation to just stop and listen for a while i tried looking through the keyhole but i couldn't see anything so i just listened to propad's voice as he was dictating shrimad bhagavatam then all of a sudden he stopped i suppose he was just thinking about what he was going to say next but then i got the feeling that he knew i was out there listening through the door i became frightened and went up the stairs as quick, quietly as uh, i could although the stairs creaked everyone was asleep not only the temple but practically the whole city of london at 1 o'clock in the morning but propad was awake and translating he had been speaking quietly but with a voice of great strength and determination all during the day he was under pressure to organize things and see people and yet at night uh, one time uh, when he could have some peace and quiet he was up dictating please let me know if there is a uh, network issues in london propad began a book on the western philosophers beginning with socrates every morning shama sundara would present a synopsis of major philosophy to propad and for several hours propad would dis- discuss the philosophers major points from the light of krishna consciousness daily shama sundara was busy transcribing the morning descript- discussions and preparing the next philosopher On August 14th, Shila Prabhupad observed Janmashtami, the birth of Lord Krishna. On the next day, Prabhupad's own 75th birthday, a paperback book of collected homages by his disciples arrived. Many of the Vyasa Puja homages praised Shila Prabhupad for his extensive traveling to deliver fallen souls all over the world and for the vast scope of his merciful preaching. This year, you have been traveling to India personally speaking and managing ISKCON and showing us the meaning of Acharya by example. and now you are traveling and inspiring devotees and centers in the us and europe at vyasa puja time we your intimate children are gathered at your feet to tell you our feelings as best we can but your blessing we can go forth from this vyasa puja gathering of 1971 and all the devotees together as one great iskon without faction truly perform the work with our thoughts words and deeds let us go and distribute this literature of shila prabhupada's krishna message krishna's message kindly delivered to the western countries let us cooperate without ill feelings amongst ourselves let us very strictly observe all the regulatory principles and stay as pure representatives let us celebrate pure sankirtan and magazine distribution to be uh, to please you all glory to shila prabhupada all your disciples pray that you will remain in our presence for many years to come and by our cooperation you will be able to spend time writing volumes of bhagavatam while we carry on program and mission of your propad ill propad ill health continued i was sick for four or five days now i am a little better in the days sometimes i am feeling some dizziness i hari krishna as usual and writing my books regularly shama sundar i was on okay if it repeats i'll change the network okay let me know again is it still so no clear ma prabhu ji no it's clear okay fine i ran into propas room as i was opening the door he collapsed on the in the doorway well, then we missed something it was a really urgent sound and i woke up 
so hard that I hit my head on the bunk above. I ran into Prabhupada's room. As I was opening the door, he collapsed in the doorway. I caught him. He felt so light like a little doll and his face was grey. I took him over to his bed and thought, Oh my God, what's going on? He was shivering. I turned the electric heater way up and put it next to his bed. I covered him with a lot of blankets and waited. He was just still. His eyes were closed. Finally, he said, go get me some black pepper. He described how to make a black pepper paste on his forehead. He said, so I ran out. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do let me know if you see the screen now. Okay. So I could tell it wasn't a physical event. His spirit is so, was so strong that although he had encountered devastating blows to his body, he had come right out of it. I could tell it wasn't a physical event. He had made a full recovery from what must have been something close to death. One day while meeting with an Indian man, Mr. R. B. Pandya from Mombasa, East Africa, Prabhupada mentioned his illness. Mr. Pandya said he owned a house on the ocean of Mombasa where it was always sunny and warm with pleasant sea breezes. A perfect place for Prabhupada to recover his health. Mr. Panya invited Prabhupada to go and live there as long as he liked. Taking the offer seriously, Prabhupada began to think of going to Africa, not only for health but for preaching. Three months ago, he had sent Brahmananda Swami and uh, Jagan, Jaganivas to East Africa, so a visit there would encourage them as well as enable Prabhupada to work personally at expanding the Krishna consciousness movement on the African continent. Prabhupada sent Bhavananda and Naranarayan from London to Mombasa to see if it would really be possible for him to stay there as Mr. Pandya has suggested. When Bhavananda and Naranarayan arrived, Brahm, uh, arrived Brahmananda Swami, who had been struggling in East Africa with only one assistant, was delighted to see them and to hear that Prabhupada was coming soon. Previously, Brahmananda Swami had been uh, preaching in Florida and Prabhupada had written to him to go to Pakistan. Immediately, he had gone along with one assistant, Jagannivas, sorry, Jagannivas, flying to Paris and then taking the Orient Express through Eastern Europe. 
on hearing that war fever was building in pakistan propad had sent a second letter to brahmananda swami in florida advising him not to go to pakistan but brahmananda swami had never received the letter and wrote to pakistan while holding public kirtan in turkey brahmananda and jagan jagan nivas had been arrested and detained for several days on suspicion of being christian missionaries finally brahmananda and jagan nivas had arrived in pakistan where student had spit at them accused them of being spies threatened them and called them names several times people on the street had rubbed the vaishnava tilak of the devotees foreheads and warned them not to show themselves in public or they would be stabbed local hindus had warned the devotees to leave as soon as possible and so they had reluctantly decided to go to bombay to see prabhupad meanwhile in bombay prabhupad had read in an indian news paper that pakistani soldiers in dhaka had killed four hare krishna missionaries i am very much anxious to know about brahmananda propad had written the day has been full of anxiety with this bad news and still it is going on when shila propad had heard that brahmananda swami had actually arrived in bombay he had asked to see him at once like a father recovering his lost child propad had embraced him you risked your life just on my order propad had said after some days propad had told brahmananda swami you should go to africa if you go then we will be on all continents now after preaching in africa brahmananda swami eagerly awaited the visit of his beloved spiritual master nairobi september 9 1971 as shila prabhupada disembarked in nairobi from the east african airline 747 jet he wore a wool chadar over his shoulders and carried the same white vinyl attached case he had taken with him all over the world flanked by his secretary and servant he walked with his cane across the air field toward the terminal building inside he sat on a cloth covered chair and joined in the kirtan while indians and africans gathered around to watch kolabhushan a journalist and friend of brahmananda swami's approached propad with questions he asked propad what he had come to teach and propad answered modern civilized man has forgotten his relationship with krishna or god and is therefore suffering whether you are hindu muslim or buddhist that doesn't matter unless you re establish your relationship with god you cannot be happy have you come only for hindus asked mr bhushan no propad replied for everyone mr bhushan east africa especially kenya is one of those countries which enjoys a great amount of racial harmony in brotherhood of men what is your special message you can bring into kenya shila propad that brotherhood of man can be complete when all are in god consciousness otherwise it will be again break it will again break mr bhushan so your disciples will be making special efforts to reach the africans rather than confine themselves to hindus that is very important here in this country shila propad our method is the same but the method is so powerful that it appeals to everyone we do not have to convey a new method for a, a new place the method is the same universal it will appeal to everyone after spending one night in nairobi propad and his party flew the next day in a small propeller aircraft to mombasa mr pandya was away and his family all although not very enthusiastic opened their home to shila propad the large house was of contemporary design with rounded corners port hole windows and a spacious living room with a veranda facing the ocean propad standing by the window in his room beheld an aqua marine sea a cloudless blue sky and a white sandy beach fringed with palms turning back toward Bra- uh, brahmananda swami and others he said brahmananda told me that this was one of the most beautiful places in the world now i see he is correct propad had come with a chronic cough but walking on the beach and relaxing in the mombasa sunshine he soon recovered his health propad maintained his program uh, he maintained his program begun in london of daily dialogues with shama sundara concerning the western philosophers chronologically he had pro- uh, proceeded from socrates to decrates uh, discrates shama sundara he is saying i think therefore i am first of all he has discovered that i am this was his innate basis for truth in his time there was no real authority propad but this is not big thing big big knowledge long long ago there were many 
who could understand i am this is called atmanam manyate jagat a fool thinks all others are fools he is not the first man to realize the identification of self krishna says aham aham evasam evagre i existed in beginning and when everything is finished i still continue to exist this we also say i existed before this body was created and i shall exist when the body is annihilated this conception of i is there in god it is in me then where is the thing new thing as soon as he felt better he was ready to preach mombasa he said was a small place in nairobi the capital would be better for preaching so he returned to nairobi nairobi september 18 1971 in nairobi shila propa demonstrated how a sanyasi should preach for one month he strictly followed vedic tradition by staying only 3 days or less in the home of each of his indian hosts then although his hosts always provided him good food and comfort accom- comfortable accommodations he would move to the next place this was the rule for sanyasis propa said it kept them from becoming attached to bodily comforts and from inconveniencing their hosts for shila propa to practice this rudimentary lessons of sanyas was of course unnecessary for he was a paramahamsa a sanyasi in highest order of krishna consciousness his body mind and words being totally engaged in krishna's transcendental service he was automatically detached from material comforts nevertheless he followed the vedic system such to inst- just to instruct his disciples by his example he was following the system of madhukari named uh, named for the bee which takes only a little pollen from a flower and then goes on to the next this system of brief visits also enables pro- enabled propad to involve more families in krishna consciousness and to honor the abundance of invitations wherever propad went he was undisputably the guru venerable sadhu yet he would deal intimately with his host developing friendships and behaving practically like an elderly elder member of the family his host would offer him the best room in their home usually their own bedroom and the lady of the house along with her assistants would cook elaborate meals propa's natural krishna conscious bearing was con- commanding and his behavior was always aristocratic yet his hosts were charmed by his humility quickly he was becoming the friend and vaishnav guru of many families in nairobi propa's behavior in nairobi was instructive for few western disciples who accompanied him on one occasion at uh, sorry, occasion a uh, Mr Devaji Damji invited Prabhupada to bless the temple room in his home Prabhupada entered and Mr Damji offered him a deer skin to sit on we do not sit on deer skin skin propa said it is pure but our vaishnavas don't wear them or sit on them that is for the yogis bhava ananda Mr Damji invited Prabhupada to sit on a sofa which had been covered by a clean white cloth propa sat down and they bathed his feet this was the first time i ever saw anyone bathe propa's feet they bathed his feet with milk and then with water and a rose pet and rose petals then they put chandan on his feet then red kumkum powder rice powder and jasmine flowers his toes were red from kumkum and grains of rice and little, little white jasmine flowers just stayed on his feet and then he gave a talk i had never noticed the guru's feet up until that time that was the first time i realized that the feet of guru are special and they are astoundingly beautiful propas wasn't satisfied preaching only to the indians he wanted to preach to the africans indians and africans were completely segregated but since a krishna conscious person doesn't make distinction based on the body propas said the indians had a duty to share their spiritual culture with the africans propas impressed on brahman brahmananda swami that his first duty in africa was to give krishna consciousness to the africans because of bad experience in turkey and pakistan brahmananda swami had been reluctant to hold public kirtans in nairobi besides the african besides the africans spoke mostly swahili they were culturally different and usually too poor to buy books so brahmananda swami didn't uh, know how to preach to them effectively going to the indians had been easy and natural but propas wanted the africans it is an african country he said simply they are the proprietors we should be preaching to them as we 
as with everything else in krishna consciousness propa demonstrated how to do this also he got the he got the use of a radha krishna temple in predominantly african downtown area the temple had a hall with doors opening on to the busy streets and propa instructed the devotees to hold kirtan in the hall keeping the doors open the devotees did as he said and uh, asked and in 5 minutes the hall began filling up with people it was a shabby area of town and the people who entered were illiterate and dirty but they were curious and they happily joined in the kirtan smiling clapping and dancing brahman and the swami left the hall and went to the nearby house where propa was staying the place is filled with people brahman and the swami said but it's not necessary for you to come we can carry on and do the program ourselves no propa said i must go brahman and the swami tried to discourage him no i must go propa repeated are you going to take me when brahman and the swami arrived with shrila propa the hall was even more crowded than it had been a few minutes before propa in his silken saffron ro- robes appeared effulgent as he entered the dingy dingy poorly lit auditorium as he walked the crowd parted uh, leaving an asail sorry asel for him to pass amongst them and they watched him curiously on stage propa led a kirtan and lectured although the Swa- Swa- swahili speaking audience was unable to understand propa's lecture the people were respectful and the kirtan they loved members of the indian community had been apprehensive of propa's opening this their hall to the africans and some of them had attended to see what would happen observing propa's compassionate program however the indians were impressed such an apparently simple program had the spiritual potency to erase cultural boundaries this should be brahmananda swami's mission in africa propa insisted offering krishna consciousness to the africans and the program should be simple distributing prasadam distributing free, free books and chanting hare krishna with the drums and kartals krishna consciousness should not be just another nairobi hindu religious society the hindus should take part by donating money but brahmananda swami's preaching and recruiting should be amongst the africans when several black americans disciples joined propa in nairobi propa told them 400 years ago your ancestors were taken away from here as slaves but ha huh, just see how you have returned as masters propa also organized nairobi's first outdoor kirtan performance the devotees went to kamakunji park's largest tree a historical landmark connected with kenya's independence as they stood chanting beneath the tree a large crowd gathered and many began chanting some even danced in a sort of tribal shuffle one young man stepped forward and offered to translate brahmananda swami's speech into swahili the devotees distributed sweet bundi and the people in the crowd uh, really enjoyed themselves the whole affair was a great success rushing back to prabhupada brahmananda swami reported on the wonderful kirtan in the park brahmananda felt the same emotion as in 1966 when he had reported to prabhupada the success of first kirtan at washington town square park in new york city now as then brahmananda swami had followed prabhupada's instructions and results had been successful prabhupada by his personal example and by his pushing brahmananda swami had within a few days changed the emphasis of preaching in africa from indians to africans The night of Shila Prabhupada's lecture at the University of Nairobi 2000 African students filled the auditorium with hundreds more standing outside to look in through the doors and windows first Prabhupada had Bhuta Bhavana a black american disciple deliver a short introduction using some borrowed swahili phrases haram harambe he began which means welcome brothers let us work together then Prabhupada spoke the whole world is simply hankering and lamenting you african people are now hankering to be like um, europeans and americans but the europeans have lost their empire they are now lamenting so one party is hankering and one party is lamenting we have come to these african countries to invite all intelligent africans to come and understand this philosophy and distribute it you are trying to develop yourselves so develop very soundly but don't imitate the americans and europeans who are living like cats and dogs such civilization will not stand the atom bomb is already there as soon as the next war breaks out all the skyscraper buildings and everything else will be finished try to understand from the real standpoint and the real view of human life that is the krishna consciousness movement and we request you to come and try to understand this philosophy thank you very much 
audience burst into applause, giving Prabhupada a standing ovation. This response proved once again that Krishna's message spoke to the heart. It was for the people regardless of their political, geographic and social predicament. When Prabhupada had first landed at Nairobi airport, he had assured the reporter that he would be preaching to the Africans. And now he was. He was delivering to Africans the same message and the same process of devotional service he had delivered to the Americans. What the Americans wanted and what the Africans wanted could be realized only in Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness would work anywhere if sincere and intelligent persons would only come forward and help distribute it. Prabhupada continued with outside speaking engagements. While appearing on the popular TV show Mambolio, Prabhupada displayed a painting of Lord Chaitanya dancing and chanting with his devotees. The interviewer asked Prabhupada, why only Caucasians appear to be in the picture? Well, there are many colors in India, Prabhupada replied. And who is the central figure here? The interviewer asked, this is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada replied, he is God. He cannot be God, the large burial in interviewer retorted. retorted. What do you mean he is God? He is a human being. But Prabhupada became even more aggressive than the interviewer. Why do you say he cannot come as a human being? Why God cannot come as a human being? In another of his many Nairobi lectures, Prabhupada says that peace was possible only on spiritual platform. Krishna consciousness alone would unite the uh, present factions. For instance, in Africa, the Indians may be satisfied with their own methods, but the Africans are not satisfied. So, if one is dissatisfied in material life, then again another is satisfied and there will be disturbance. But if you come to Krishna conscious platform, if you engage yourself in transcendental loving service of Supreme Personality of Godhead, then your mind and soul will be fully satisfied. Prabhupada went on to explain his plans for helping Africans. We have come to Africa to educate the people, not only Indians or the Hindus, but also the native people, the local population. I am glad that our people are going to Sankirtan part in, in the streets as we go everywhere in London, in New York and all big cities of the world. We are trying to lead our Sankirtan parties through the streets and the local African boys and girls gent and gentlemen are gathering. They are receiving this movement. So there is every possibility of spreading Krishna consciousness everywhere. This movement has come here. So I request that those who are present try to cooperate with the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And I am sure that African boys and girls will take part in it as you have experienced. We have a great, we have a great many African boys and girls as our students in America. So there is no difficulty. It is not that because one is very busy, therefore he cannot serve God. Or that because one is poor or black or white, that he cannot serve God. No. Anyone who takes to the process of pure devotion service will never be checked. Prabhupada also asked his audience to help the devotees establish a center in Nairobi. We must have a place to stay. Unless we stay, how can we prosecute the movement? Therefore, help us immediately. Give us a place and see how things improve. You have already tested this movement and found that it has been successful all over the world. Why not in Africa? We are not a sectarian group. We don't consider whether one is African or American. In Nairobi, Prabhupada heard of a new law in Tanzania that after 10 years, all private property would automatically become the property of the state and that the owner will be entitled to only a 10% reimbursement. This was a typical Kali Yuga law, Prabhupada remarked. The state passes a law with no reasoning and no benefit for the people. The state should protect the people, Prabhupada said. In the Vedic history, during the misrule of a demo demoniac, King Vena, the sages and brahmanas had become very disturbed and had punished him. And the sadhus duty was to make sure that the king ruled justly. But today, now where in the world where political affairs in order, there was no sane philosophy to guide society. We must begin to interfere, Prabhupada urged his disciples. Now we are 500 men and we each have 50 years. So think of what we can do. But you must become dedicated as I am. Sometimes a Vaishnava is criticized as doing nothing, but Arjuna and Hanuman were Vaishnava warriors. When the high court judges were, were Tilak, then we are successful. My Guru Maharaj said that. But, uh, my god brothers were for uh, getting temples, some rice, eating a little, chanting. 
but for us first we work then samadhi the word samadhi technically refers to a state of trance in which one is completely absorbed in krishna and forgets the material world and all material desires generally samadhi is thought of in terms of secluded meditation a highly advanced yogi goes to a sol- uh, solitary peaceful place and meditates or chants constantly but propa demonstrated by his life ex- life's example that the world situation was too urgent for a devotee to retire and meditate rather a devotee should labor hard to increase the krishna consciousness movement this would benefit both the devotee and the masses propa's disciples therefore as servants of the spiritual master should work now and later perhaps in old age and spiritual maturity they could retire to a holy place to constantly chant and hear about krishna propa emphasized work yet what was that work at least for shila propa propagating krishna consciousness was samadhi itself samadhi didn't have to be limited to sitting in a solitary place the full meaning of samadhi implied complete absorption in the loving service of krishna with the senses mind and intelligence fixed in trance thus in samadhi one could be active traveling preaching distributing back to god magazines chanting in the streets if a devotee always thought of krishna and worked on behalf of krishna then he was the topmost yogi this has also been lord krishna's advice to arjuna remember me and at the same time fight shila propa on the emblem of active samadhi always hearing hearing about glorifying and remembering krishna and always fighting as a soldier on behalf of lord chaitanya propa's preaching in nairobi had been especially active he had established krishna consciousness in a new city setting the example for brahmananda swami to emulate showing the standard for spreading krishna consciousness throughout the continent and shama sundara was keeping his gbc god brothers informed of propa's amazing activities the pace has been lightning fast and his divine grace is opening up yet another vast th- theater of operations the people are thronging with um curiosity and serious questions propa after finishing one late night preaching marathon asked for food and remarked you see i am hungry keep me talking that is my life don't let me stop talking but nairobi was only one city in one country on one continent propa desire was to see krishna consciousness in every city town and village in the world how could he do it in one lifetime traveling to every city in the world printing and distributing books in every language constructing fabulous temples he couldn't but he wanted to do as much as possible in whatever time krishna allotted to him to ensure that krishna consciousness movement would survive he criticized the politicians typical attitude that unless they themselves remained active everything they had worked for would crumble such politicians were always reluctant to retire preferring to remain in office until their last breath propa however had no personal ambition and he knew that the results were awarded by krishna as a true sanyasi he had re- renounced the world and worldly ambition but he had not become lazy he was executing his mission at an advanced age and lord krishna was rewarding his attempts propa therefore in a mood of re- reciprocating with krishna kept working to expand the krishna consciousness movement knowing that lord krishna wanted the world flooded with love of god shila propa had earnestly tried to do it beginning in a storefront in new york city and krishna city and krishna had responded sending him a few men and en- enough money to pay the rent then shila propa had attempted to do more and again krishna has re- responded thus a second iskon center and a third and a fourth and more had sprung up and book book printing had begun shila propa in his mood of loving reciprocation with krishna just kept attempting more and more now it was no longer simply one person's work shila propa had was entrusting the work to his disciples and those disciples if they were actually to help would have to adopt propa's selfless dedication as they tried to follow him in his expansive plans however their minds faltered for a handful of devotees to maintain even one temple in one city with a big job yet propas was doing this a hundred times over he wanted the movement he had started to continue for thousands of years and he was confident that as long as his followers remained pure working within the guidelines he had given they would be successful although the present age of kali was the worst of all ages in which people had little or no interest in spiritual life propas had faith uh, in the past acharyas predictions that krishna consciousness was destined to enter a golden 
age of world wide influence true it was the worst of times yet by the influence of holy name of krishna it would become the best of times the chanting of the holy name was the religion of the age and the people of kali yuga would first deliver could find del- deliverance simply in chanting hare krishna shila prabhupad's activities show him he was empowered by krishna this is evident from his uh, childhood when he at the age of 5 he held a rath yatra festival and it is certainly evident from the, these years 1968 to 1971 when he actively expanded his krishna consciousness movement prabhupad compared this con to varaha incarnation of krishna who at first had been no bigger than a thumb but had quickly expanded to half the size of the universe his con's rapid growth was not simply due to rapid <clears throat> communications and modern travel not to its uh, founder acharya's uh, material organizational abilities propa judged materially was not a likely person to conduct a worldwide movement to travel vigorously to write volumes of books and to train thousands of disciples on every continent he was satisfied with a simple regulated life and he disdained all such cultural il- items as music fashion sports politics art food anything not related to krishna he worked and traveled out of an intense desire to benefit the world with real culture to implant spiritual culture in what he, to him was a desert of materialistic society therefore according sorry therefore accepting that propad was not materialistically ambitious we can understand his proclivity for worldwide propaganda and dissemination of a spiritual movement as entirely transcendental he was acting solely to carry out the desires of lord sri krishna the supreme person of god shila prabhupad saw some uh, himself as a servant of his spiritual master shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati tha saraswati whose message he was carrying that message which was also the message of lord krishna had come around through disciplic succession we are all spirit so spiritual souls eternal souls uh, eternal servants of the supreme person of godhead krishna we have now fallen into the forgetfulness and are suffering birth after birth in this material world by chanting hare krishna we can revive our lost relationship with god shila prabhupad ki jai hare krishna we still have to continue but we will do it next week thank you thank so you prabhu ji yeah thank you very much motivating hmm. here to Any... the mission of the prabhupad here so before that time there was no uh, movement no so that was the first time when the movement hari krishna was started that is in africa in africa yeah sorry yeah only in africa yeah and the news of that for for hari krishna were killed by the pakistan uh, government what was that prabhu ji uh, i don't know so yeah. there were some casual there were some casualties that happened during the rights okay but were yeah. they the hari uh, the scon devotees or yeah at that time there was only hari krishnas which is scon ah okay Yes. they used to i mean there is no like iskon rather than uh, people used to call iskon as a hare krishna movement so hare krishnas means part of people who are hare krishna movement yes okay okay prabhu ji thank you thank you anyone want to share anything here everyone here is tired i'll just show them i'll stop the video first no not video recording so uh huh i have to change this what is it everyone is ready now okay mm-hmm. hari bol <laughs> yeah 
Babuji. He has the royal. He has the royal chair. It looks like He's a blend. He is blended into it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Also, the cloth. Also, the cloth is very nice. Looks like a sannyasi. <laughs> he also has hair style. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very nice. Hmm. Okay, then close the call. If there are no anyone want to share anything, so probably tomorrow class uh, will you take morning? Tomorrow no class, na? Huh? Tomorrow no no class or no class? Okay, okay, probably. Yeah, you want to say something? I think. Sadish Prabhu, can you hear Sadish Prabhu? Because I have not enabled the mic for him. Can you hear him? No problem. Okay. Now you can speak. <laughs> the laser focus so here uh, you can hear now yeah challenging to uh, pick up the voice uh, but please try prabhu ji again so i think you know this was very much uh, uh, you know like like they said people are finding it tough to maintain one temple and the prabhupad is maintaining across continents so that focus and energy zeal is uh, you know again it's a friday so it's absolutely a mess yeah, so help us sorry Nairobi in a very dirty place, this part of the Nepal. Mm-hmm. Also, disciples also like Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, that city name, Prabhuji, Guru Maharaj also mentioned na, many times in his lectures. I forgot the Mom- name of Mombasa. Mombasa. <laughs> yeah. That's for the new band. Whatever the event, right? It's going there. Also, what we are dealing. Yeah. See, we are living. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay then. Take care. Tomorrow. Uh, we'll okay, Prabhuji. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna to all. Good to see. <laughs> you said thank you for no class, no? Huh? Thank you for no class. <laughs> no problem. Just thank you for today's class. Yeah. yeah. Happy to see you all together. In the- see. See things that come very very uh, spontaneously, right? So are more closer to truth. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nina did not know that you were coming there. <laughs> no one knows. Even we didn't know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then take care. मंचकर्तुरप्यश्च कृपा सिंधु भी है बच्चा पतितानाम पावन एब्यो वैष्णव एब्यो नमो नमः किलवरोपाद की जय हिस्सोने सत्सरो गोस्वामी महाराज की जय अनंत गोटी वैष्णव की जय नमः श्रीहरिदास्ताकुल की जय जय गोर पेमान हरि 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 कृष्ण हरि कृष्ण